Hi everyone, Jacqueline here. So today we are going to prepare our, our roses for winter. And when I refer to roses, I am talking about you know, your miniature roses in particular, which is my focus here in my garden, because all the rest of my larger roses are more of a shrub base, which is hardy for my zone. However, miniature roses tend to be zones 4 and 5. Okay, so I'm a zone 3B, so they need winter protection. So that is what we're going to do today. We are going to prepare them. Now, I'm going to show you my methods and the supplies I have on hand to do this. In your area, you can have a look and see what you have, because you have a lot of options for what you protect them with, right? Anything from, you know, mixing dirt and leaves, or dirt and lawn, or a combination of the three, to using uh, mulch, compost, that you have in your garden and mixing that in with some grass and that to keep it a little bit lighter or you can use rose cones and fill them with any of the above that I just mentioned it's totally your choice my method today is going to be covering them with a mulch that is a combination of tree shre um, shreddings okay so I had a tree stump grinded and it's turned it into a mulch or and it's combined with dirt to give it some weight that is what I'm going to use, and landscape tarp, okay? So the reason I have chosen to use landscape tarp is because it's light, it breathes, and they can still receive moisture into them. But I want to protect them so the mulch, leaves, whatever you use doesn't blow away. And that's the key with putting some sort of cone or something around them. Now, because I have so many miniature roses in this garden, uh, I just can't go and put a cone around every single one. So I am going to mulch them over, and cover them with landscape tarp and weight that tarp down. So let's talk about how we get these roses prepared into the garden uh, to cover them first because we have some work to do first and there's some really some key steps that I want you guys to keep in mind when you do this. A few things you should really do. Step number one, water your roses in really really well before you cover them. We need to give them a fighting chance at winter. So I watered these all in with a deep soaking yesterday to prepare them for this. Okay. And we have a really cool day today. It's only about plus six or seven Celsius and it's freezing at night. We're going down to like minus two, minus three, even minus six Celsius at night. So I have allowed not only for these guys to take a couple nights of the colder temperatures to harden them off and help them go dormant, but I have also watered them in and soaked them really, really well. Now you can see, looking at these roses, that the flowers are starting to wither. These in particular, do you'll see the odd rose hip. It's not really rose hip. It's basically a finished or a spent bloom. If they are rose hips, leave them on. Okay, step number one. So what I'm going to tell you right now is what I do in a colder climate. So don't cut them back. Okay, do not cut them to the ground. You will read all over the internet that you are supposed to cut these roses to the ground or three or four inches above the ground. Don't do it. Even if you have larger roses, your floribunders, your hybrid teas, um, some of your David Austin roses that are sensitive in our colder climates, don't cut them back. Okay leave them for the winter because in the spring what you're going to run into is some of that stalk or the branches are going to die so when you uncover these after all frost is gone and i want to stipulate that after all frost is gone so you don't lose them you will then be looking for new shoots and then you will cut them or prune them where those new shoots are so you will cut the dead wood off so we want to leave as much as possible so that we have ample branches and stems for them to bloom okay if we cut them down too much and they take a winter kill your roses are toast okay and that goes for all of them in a colder climate so that's a step number one number two come through here and cut all the flowers off now you will notice a discrepancy in this bed and that is the red rose i just planted it okay so it's really green, really healthy. I have been putting it out on the deck at night to harden it off a bit, but it's just so darn healthy. So I'm going to come through here, first step, and I'm going to cut all the branch, all the flowers off these roses, okay? But not the branches, just the flowers. So let's do that first. All right, so I have some pruners here. 
these are just little pruners because they're little roses and depending on the rose you're dealing with you might need heavier pruners and i'm just going to come through cut it down to where the stem is right there and just get those flower heads off so we'll go through and we'll do all the roses like that make sure you cut off any new blooms as well you can see this one has a flower on let's get rid of it okay and go through plant by plant if any of them has spent flowers like this just leave them don't worry about them because they're already spent or done okay you can see this rose has a lot of new shoots coming on it it's kind of sad to cut them off but i'm going to take them all off you don't have to be too kind we're not here to prune the back that's not what we're doing we're giving the energy to the root system for winter that is why we're cutting the flowers off i just have a couple more here to finish and i'm just looking through them for new blooms just to take that off so just go through have a quick look see a new bloom take it off all right so that's done now i'm going to come in and i'm going to put mulch all over these and pile it up good and i'm going to show you what i'm doing here so i'll do one and then i'm going to show you how i heaped it up but we were gonna i'm gonna have to do a big chunk of them all together i have a couple over here that are kind of on their own so they're going to be mounted kind of together but the whole bed isn't going to be mounted okay i'm going to use the sections in between these just to weight the fabric down to cover them so that they're protected for winter okay so this is the next step so once you cut the blooms off and any flower buds that we're trying to open now we come through and we mulch Okay, I'm going to show you what I have for mulch here. This is tree mulch. So this is the tree stump that was grinded. I'm going to, you can put these in here. It's in the flower bed. But it's not going to hurt them. But for the most part, this is a combination, as you can see, of tree shreddings from the stump and dirt. So when they, when they grind trees, they tend to get dirt and stuff because they're grinding them as deep as they can to stop those roots from spreading. So you can see it's got a nice combination of dirt, a bit of grass, and the tree sawdust or sh shreddings i'm not sure the right word to use for that but good enough so this is what you want it's not to the point that it's making balls so it's not heavy it's not super wet it's decently light but not too light so like a peat moss would be too light potting soil is too light right you need some good garden soil in there mixed in good with whatever you're going to use okay so now we're going to take a shovel and we're going to put this on top of the roses and cover them that's the first step to mulching them over is give them good coverage and making sure they're all covered. So you can see how I'm starting to mound around the rose. So first thing you do when you put your mulch on is put it around the rose, all around the edges of the rose, and then pile it on top. And make sure you have a good two to three inch layer on all the sides for starters. And then you're gonna want at least probably a four or five inch layer on top, minimum. These are miniature roses. They don't take as much as a larger rose would, but this is the same process. Pack them in good, give them a little tap on the edge to make sure it's firm, just like that, and pile it up around in a circle and then on top. All right, so you can see I have packed it in all around. I took my shovel and I compressed it on the sides, not on the top, because I don't want to break any branches. And now I'm going to go and pile it up on top and do the rest of these. So that's how I recommend you do it. Pile it good at least two or three inches on the side if you want to do more that's great too if you have lots of extra mulch leaves grass and dirt to do this then go ahead and pile it thicker on the sides mine are going to be piled pretty thick because they're so close together so let's go ahead and get the rest of these done and i'm going to pile it on top next so you can see how i've kind of mounted where the miniature roses are and how high i've mounted them and you can see there's plants on the outer edge, like here, that are sticking out. Those are salvia. And so I don't know if you remember in one of my videos, I plant some salvia around the bed to give it some extra color. Because the roses are going to do what most perennials do, right? First year, they sleep, they don't do a lot. Second year, they creep, so you get a bit of growth. Third year, they leap. So with roses, technically you can get any one of those variations with them but the first year they're setting down those roots basically and that's the key so look at your bed here look for low spots in it add more mulch okay that's what we're going to do i've got another cartload here that i want to use 
and I'm just looking and look from all angles. So I'm going to show you. I'm walking around the bed and I'm kind of looking to see where there's low spots, right? Now your mulch is going to be varying heights because of the height of your roses. So just a warning as well as some of it's going to spill over and it's going to look more than two or three inches deep. So it might be four or five, six or seven inches deep. It depends how many roses you're co covering. The more you have to cover, the deeper this mulch is going to look, right? So I see here, I need more mulch on top. There's kind of a low spot there. You can see kind of a gap. Let's get it nice and level and let's put some more on. And then we're going to do what I call the pat test. And I'll show you what that is. It's really quite simple. It sounds worse than what it is. Okay, you can see now that I have added more mulch and how it's looking a lot more level. But is it making good contact with the plants? Are there air pockets in this mulch where the cold can get in? Let's do it. I call it the pat test. Okay, this is my own personal way of doing things, you guys. And I just call it the pat test because it makes sense and it might stick with you. It sticks with me. And I come through here with my hand and I firmly push down, okay? I don't push down to the point that I would bust a branch, but I push down to make sure there's no air pockets. So anywhere that mulch is, because it's got piles on it now, anywhere that mulch appears loose and fluffy, give it the pat test. Now go around and pat your entire bed down, okay? This is key, because they can still get moisture from the ground, they can still get moisture coming from the top, but we want to make sure that that winter kill that comes from the really cold climates and winds, winds is really bad for drying them out and killing them, that they're firmly padded down with no holes for the tunneling to happen and kill those roses, okay? So now go through and do that. And pat it all down good. Just don't push so hard that you break branches. My nose is running from the cold, so beware you're gonna hear sniffles, I'm not sick. So if you find gaps where you have perennials in like this, and there's gonna be an air pocket. Put your fingers in there. Let's double check it. Pull some more mulch over, press it down. Go through, press it down. You feel holes around perennials, see? Let's go in there, let's put our fingers in, see if there's a gap. Press it down. Perennials are bad, the leaves get in the way, and I don't cut them back either until spring because I try to help the beneficial insects. So go ahead and push them down. But do a check. So we're going to come over and we're going to check this one here. Push it down. If you find when you pull mulch over that you have a gap on top and your leaves are popping through, put some more mulch on. Okay? That's the key. Right in the middle of that perennial there, you want to make sure you got it. Okay? Like I said, miniature roses are very hardy, but they're zones four and five. And, uh, I have overwintered them before successfully, kind of got away from doing roses. We moved and stuff too, and uh, now I'm starting over. So you see, I'm moving a little bit of dirt around just to push the cracks in. I'm not busting any branches and I'm packing it down. Okay, I'm gonna finish now, packing it down. As I finish packing this up, packing this down, I notice something. There's a rose popping through, so I need more mulch. So let's pack that on because that one's a bit taller. Okay, I have covered it over again. You can see from the side it's much higher and I'm just gonna do the same thing again. I'm gonna pack her down, pat her down, pack her down, firm that mulch, soil, leaves, grass, whatever you're using in place. Okay, good. I'm gonna do another final walk around. I'm checking for anything green that is sticking out. Nope, that's okay. It's just an extra check and balance. Um, you might think I'm a bit anal retentive. Maybe I am. I don't know. But um, this is how I make sure and give myself some sort of comfort in knowing that I did a good job to look after them. It's just my way. And uh, you might think it's excessive, obsessive behavior, whatever you, you call it. But I consider it um, doing my best to give them a chance for next year. All right, so now that's packed down, we are gonna put our landscape tarp 
over top. And you can see I pulled the blocks out of my bed and I'm going to put them along the edges. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the landscape tarp over, cover it over good, put the blocks on, I'll show you what it's like, and then I have another step that I want to do. Okay, you can see I'm starting to pack, I'm starting to put the landscape tarp down, or landscape fabric down. I'm putting blocks. I got four blocks. I'm putting one on each end and then one on the sides to hold it in place. And then we're going to do another step in this process, which once again is extra protection because I am a really cold climate, but I feel it's necessary to keep the wind and the cold at bay. Now, someone may ask me, how thick is the landscape tarp you're using? Good question. I just use cheap landscape tarp. You can see right through it. All it is is to keep that soil in place, right? That's all it is. I can rip it with my hands and cover the bed. That is what I'm trying to do. Keep the soil, mulch, leaves, whatever you're using in place. That is what it's for and to cut a little bit of the wind down. So it doesn't have to be the heavy duty landscape, professional landscape fabric or tarp, but it does need to be breathable. Quite honestly, you guys, you could probably even use like bedding, old bedding sheets, blankets and put over top and that would work just fine. Use what you have on hand. I don't expect people to go out and buy everything that I do. I expect you to do, you know, to protect your roses and do the things that work with your financial budget and with how you want to do things. And take my techniques, use them to your advantage, modify them if you need to and make it work. Okay, so now I'm putting the blocks on the sides. Now remember, on the front over there, I don't have any roses. So, and that's okay, because we're gonna put the block right up close. So let's go around and do that, and I'll show you. I mean, I'm just putting a landscape block on the fabric, right? I should have set up my tripod. It would have been easier. Okay, so I pull the fabric over. I'm grabbing the block here, like that putting it up close okay now it's all protected but look what's happening over here so we have a couple choices here we can find more landscape blocks and put them down or we can mulch I am gonna mulch it again and cover all those edges all the way around just to hold it in place and stop the wind blowing underneath so I'm gonna get some more of this mulch and put on and it'll also weight it down all right you guys it's done so I ran mulch all along the edge, packed down that landscape fabric all the way around or sheet or blanket or whatever you're using. Really good. If you use rose cones, pack her down all around the edge of the rose cone good too, okay? To prevent that wind from getting in. Because the wind, the dryness is what also kills roses besides the cold, okay? Then I went around and I used the pat technique again and I patted it in so that there's no holes for that wind to get underneath and lift that tarp. Because mulch is fairly light. Now, you have other options besides using mulch for the edging, right? I have fence boards laying all over the place here because Rob's been working on this fence. I don't think he's gonna get it done this year, but whatever. Um, and you can use those and lay them on the edge and then pile the mulch on. I would recommend you put like a mulch underneath though and then the board on because even with a board on you're going to have gaps right that the wind can get in the mulch really takes care of the wind so mulch like i said whatever you're using pack it on the edges to protect it and then do the pat test one more time so we do the pat test twice right we do the pat test when we mulch the plants over and we do the bat pat test on the edge when we put the landscape tarp down or landscape fabric down. Remember, your fabric, your blankets, your sheets, whatever you're gonna use needs to be breathable so they can still get some moisture come in. It also helps to get them through the winter. And like next week, we're having some warm weather again. We're going into the mid-teens on the Celsius scale. So, I mean, I don't want these to fry, right? So that's why I don't use the tarp. You let use something that breathes. Okay, so that's done. You can see what I did. You can see there's still concrete blocks showing in some spots. That's okay. We're not trying to cover the concrete. We're just trying to make sure we've got our gaps filled. So there's a gap in the tarp around the concrete block. Pack it with mulch or whatever you're using. I'm just gonna go walk through so you can see. I don't wanna bore you either because, you know, sometimes us video people um, can be boring. All right, so that's all done. Now, I want to recap what we did from the beginning. Okay, you guys. Number one, 
water your roses in. I don't care what kind of roses they are. If they are hardy to your area, water them in really well. Number two, cut off any blooms or fresh buds. You don't have to cut the rose hips. Cut that back. Do not cut your plants back, okay? Number three, whether you're using leaves, soil, grass clippings, mix it together so you have some weight in it. That's why I like the soil in it. And pile that on your roses. First pile it on the sides and pack it in good, then pile it on top, okay? And pile it up good. You want at least three inches of coverage all the way around. And if the plant is taller, it will take more, okay? So you're gonna be winging it a bit because I mean, we're not gonna go and measure the thickness, but you can see what I've done here. Once you pile that on, go all the way around and do the first pat test, okay? Pat it down, pat down that mulch, make sure there's no gaps or air holes around the roses, okay? After you do that, then we're gonna come back with a landscape fabric, blanket, sheet, whatever you had that is breathable, and I mean breathable, um, not like a car tarp or something that's plastic. And put that on top and hold it down with whatever you have, something heavy. I use landscape blocks because they were handy. They were already in the bed and I just put four on just to hold it in place. Then I came back with more mulch and I mulched all the edge of the landscape fabric to hold the fabric in place and prevent any air pockets from picking up that fabric. We're not so much protecting the roses for air pockets. We're now trying to keep that fabric in place and prevent air getting a hold of it before the snow falls and lifting that tarp, right? That we have to go out. Because sometimes, you know, you'll get a really heavy, windy day. It'll come up, it'll pick up that landscape fabric. And excuse me if I say tarp, because it's still, you know, breathable. I just want to reiterate that because I'm catching myself on that. Anyhow, we want to make sure that we have those edges sealed so they don't get picked up in the wind because they might pick up before a storm in the wind and then the storm might come right after and then you've got gaps, right? So this is the time to do that. And finally, once you have it all down, pat again. And I like to use my hands because I like to feel to make sure it's fairly solid, okay? And it's a gentle pat, you guys. We're not like, you know, beating it up or anything. We're gently firming the mulch or whatever you're using in place on that fabric. And that is it. Go around, inspect for gaps, do a couple walk arounds, and you're done. That's all we do. And we're ready to go now for winter, and they are well protected. I feel pretty secure in what I just did, that they will make it through the winter. The big thing for me, you guys, and that's just me, is I like to remove stuff early before the frost. So like the weather will be warm and we'll have a week of really good weather, and then I'll go, oh great, it's here, we can remove the tarp. Or, sorry, we can remove the fabric. We can uncover the mulch off all the plants that were, you know, that weren't hardy, that are tender plants to my area. Bang! You know, all of a sudden, cold snap. And my plants are uncovered. So now I'm running around with my head cut off trying to cover them over. So let's wait until all frost has passed before we uncover these. And that goes for your tender perennials too. Okay? So that's it for you guys. I hope that this helps you. Let me know your successes in your area. Like I said, roses vary by zone. If you're in a cold zone like me, 3B, I'm in Canada, you need to provide that extra protection. Um, some roses are zone 4, 5, and 6. Only the hardy ones are for my climate, right? So if you want to grow them, you got to protect them. Anyhow, that's it. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my video. Drop me a comment. Was it a good video? Was it a crappy video? Um, did I miss something? Do you do something different? Love to hear from you. Anyhow, let gardening warm your soul and we really need the warmth today and take care. Thank you everyone. See you in the next video.